All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 561 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. We're going to talk some Atlanta Falcons today. Um, first and foremost, I, I really need a new hat. I mean, I think this hat was from the draft like two, three years ago. I need a new Atlanta Falcons hat, so I'll probably be going out and look for one. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the Falcons have a draft dilemma. I think they're going to have a draft dilemma on their hands. Um, it's good to see that uh, Desmond Ritter is changing to number nine. And uh, I'm going to keep, uh, you know, that image on the screen because that actually looks much better on him than the number four. And also when I think about the number four, um, it kind of reminds me of the whole Deshaun Watson situation where it was almost uh, guaranteed that he was going to be on the team. And uh, we know how that played out. And, you know, looking back on it, uh, you know, that number four just rubs me the wrong way at the end of the day. But it's good to see Desmond Ritter back with number nine. So if you're watching on YouTube and Rumble, you will see that image. But we're going to talk about some draft order real quick, possibly like the top eight, nine picks, because we're picking number eight. So we're going to talk about that. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Uh, you can go over there, sign up over there, um, or I mean, subscribe over there, and uh, pretty much, uh, you know, you'll get the updates on the podcast when it happens. Also, I highly advise you to go and do the YouTube and Rumble one as well, or just at least sign up for more than one because there'll be times where one episode is not up on one end, but it'd be up on another. I mean, technology is weird how that goes. Also, the new website, firstandframerates.com. I want to thank you guys for the first week and a half. You guys have been going to the website, checking it out. I um, haven't heard anything bad so far. Looks like it's running up, running pretty well. I am going to make more of um, time, make more time to do more things over there. Uh, I plan on putting some writings over there. I'm going to write some stuff, may put some articles out in, um, so you guys can get some links over there. I want that to be the hub for all Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons stuff. So hopefully, you know, by the end of the week, I have at least my first blog up or at least by next Monday, because I kind of want to do one every Monday. So um, that's that's the plan right there. But first and frame dot com, first and frame dot com. Y'all go check that out. And, um, you know, we'll just go from there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this. Desmond Ritter's number nine. Everything is going well. Tyler Henneke, Taylor Henneke is going to be number four. Heineke. It's going to be number four. Seems like everything is moving in place as far as the quarterbacks go. Everybody want to know about Lorenzo Carter. Lorenzo Carter is going to be number zero. He's going to be the first number zero on the team because now you can get number zero. Uh, also noted, I don't think anybody know about this, but if you do, um, that's awesome. Calvin Ridley for the Jaguars. He's going to be wearing number zero, our former wide receiver. He's going to be wearing number zero for the Jaguars. So it's going to be really interesting who's all going to be wearing that number. I'm really interested to see who's the first quarterback that'll do it. But, you know, that, that's going down a whole nother road. But um, looking at round one, the, the Carolina Panthers got the number one pick from Chicago. Chicago moved back to number nine. Then you have the Houston Texans, Arizona Cardinals, Indianapolis Colts, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, the Detroit Lions, Las Vegas Raiders, then us, the Atlanta Falcons, then the Bears, then the Eagles. I'm not going to go too much further from there because I don't think that we play any role into anything after 10. Maybe, maybe not. Because the Falcons have a dilemma on their hands. There's already rumblings that saying like, look, Bryce Young is going to be the guy. Bryce Young is going to be the guy that goes to the Panthers. Um, not too many people are really high on CJ Stroud like that. Um, and when I say not too many people, I'm talking about like not too many people in the top 10, you know, CJ Stroud. And um, also um, Anthony Richardson is moving up still. And Will Levis is just like right there. So you got four, you got four quarterbacks and um, looking like with the first eight, nine picks, I don't think all four is going to be taken. Now, here's the dilemma. There's already rumbling saying Bryce Young is going to be the guy. He's going to be the guy that goes to the Panthers. There's rumblings that the Texans and the Arizona Cardinals, and definitely not the Cardinals, they're not high on the quarterback. Kyler Murray is going to be the quarterback for Arizona. He just costs ways too much, and they're going to try to run with him at least one more year. I, I mean, I, I could see that happening. Houston Texans got um, Davis Mills. He's not that bad of a quarterback. Um, he's just in a bad situation. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, he, I mean, he has some okay receivers, but the team is just abysmal. I mean, what can you do? But that doesn't 
Yeah, I don't think that warrants them to actually go get a quarterback. I mean, if if they don't get a quarterback at number two, the floodgates open because now you have the Indianapolis Colts sitting there. Will they get Anthony Richardson? Um, the, then you don't have the. I don't see the Seattle Seahawks getting a quarterback. I don't see the Detroit Lions or the Vegas Raiders getting a quarterback. So after the seven, after seven picks, you're probably going to have only like two quarterbacks coming off dra- off the board: Bryce Young and Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud. Uh, and, and Will Levis is just going to be sitting there. And we're not even going to talk about Hendon Hooker. I'm not even going that far down the list of, of quarterbacks because I don't think – I think Hendon Hooker is going to surprise a lot of people, but I don't think that a lot of teams are booking on him to be like a top 10 pick. But nevertheless, this is where the dilemma starts. The dilemma starts where what do the Falcons do? We already – I ain't going to say we, but the coach is already kind of committed to Desmond Ritter in public. They actually said that he's going to be the guy. I haven't seen anything or any indication that Arthur Smith or Terry Fontenot really back up a back against their word when they say stuff like that. But Anthony Richardson, I think uh, I think they interviewed pretty much all the quarterbacks. I'm not 100% sure, but I know for sure Anthony Richardson was in Atlanta to visit the Falcons. So that's something to think about. But what do the Colts do? Because like I said, two and three is going to be uh, no man's land. I don't think they're going to pick up a quarterback at all. You could see some team try to move up to get uh, a quarterback. You're you're probably looking at, uh, you know, oh, goodness, I'm looking down the line. Like I said, I don't want to go past 10. But when you're looking at uh, Houston is still at 12, so that's going to be really interesting for them, what they're actually going to do. They may get two dynamic players to help Davis Mills. But when you start looking at, let's say, the Jets, uh, because you got to understand, I mean, they may get Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers is probably like on a one or two year rental. You may want to go and get that quarterback for the future. It wouldn't be hard to do that because, you know, it's not going to be like a Jordan Love situation at this point. Um, you're also looking at uh, possibly the Packers, the Commanders. You know, those, those guys can move up as well. What about Tampa Bay at 19? Do they try to move up to get a C.J. Stroud or whatever? I mean, it's, it's going to be really interesting. So I don't know if they're going to move all the way up to two and three. But when you start looking at eight, you know, seven, eight, and nine, this is where the dilemma starts for the Falcons. What do they do right there? Do they go ahead and stick to their guns and stick with Desmond Ritter? Do they actually get a quarterback right there and put more competition out there? I mean, I already know that they said there's going to be competition between him and Heineke. But what do they do? Do they trade back? Because it's going to be a lot of draft capital. If you if, if look, it, just if CJ Stroud goes past number six it's going to be a real big scramble for for his services i i I believe that if you have cj stroud sit behind uh aaron Rodgers in new york or maybe have him come in right away and play for washington what what about a situation with tampa bay because i mean you don't know what's going to happen with the whole situation with uh with baker mayfield i don't think nobody's really high on him but when you look at everybody, I think those are the other teams that I'm looking at that may make a move. I mean, the Steelers got the quarterback, the Lions, eh, I don't know. I don't think the Lions are actually going to give up on um, on golf just yet, especially after a strong finish like they had last year. That team is a very, uh, I'll say they're a very interesting team in the NFC North. I mean, because they, 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 they wreak some havoc the last four or five games. So let's see how they build off of that. Now, you're also looking at, um, you know, Seattle, they just signed uh, – Geno Smith to a three-year deal. They got a number five and a number 20 pick. I don't see them going anywhere with that as far as trying to jump and get a quarterback. So with that being said, um, oh, this is another team I didn't even talk about, the Tennessee Titans. What do the Titans do at 11? Do they try to stand pat and think that uh, Will Levis dropped down to them? I, it, it's very interesting because they don't have a quarterback at this point. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, uh, Malik Willis was going to be the guy, but there, there, there is indication that there's moving on from him. So what do the Falcons do right here? It's going to be a really interesting look because the Falcons, like if, if everything goes well, you know, Bryce Young goes to the Panthers, CJ Stroud goes to the Texans. You're still talking about Anthony Richardson probably going to number four. I don't think the Falcons are going to even be looking at Will Levis's way. We're probably going to end up getting a Nolan Smith or a Jalen Carter. Uh, hell, we might even get B. John Robinson. I mean, there's it, it, it's so many options at that point. And the only reason why I thought put Jalen Carter's name back out there again because Jalen Carter is another player that actually went back 
to or oh, Angus and went back, but he actually visited the Falcons. I think he, he was the last visit uh, of all the teams. So that's a very, very interesting how that's going to play out. So um, my pick is uh, Nolan Smith, uh, but uh, Jalen Carter, B. John Robinson, especially Jalen Carter is like, or is really probably is really in play. But what happens when these quarterbacks that are highly touted slide down? What if they do slide down? It's a dilemma for the Falcons because they could probably move back a few spaces. Let's say they move back to 11, get some more draft capital, and still be able to get the player that they want defensively or get the player that they've been wanting all along. Or let's say if another team has that's further back try to move up. Let's say if the Jets at 13 try to move up. You know, what if the, the Packers try to move up? The Washington Commanders move up at 16. You're going to be getting more draft capital if that's the case instead of just moving up two spaces. So I feel like this is going to be a really good uh, look for the Falcons if they're in put, put in this situation. It's not going to be just cut and dry where the Falcons are just going to, you know, pick a player and go. Because if you got quarterbacks right there that other teams may be grabbing for, you could probably get something out of that. Now, what do I expect to happen overall? I expect the Raiders to probably move, make this move. If the if if CJ Stroud or let's say uh, Will Levis, hell, even if Anthony Richardson drops to number seven for them, they're going to make a move. But if they make a move, what does that do to, for the Falcons? Does the Falcons make a move right behind them? I don't see the Las Vegas Raiders um, going after a quarterback. Maybe they go after Will Levis. They just got Jimmy Garoppolo. I know. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo may not be the guy for them, but if they pick somebody that high, it's going to be really hard to justify signing Jimmy Garoppolo for a pretty decent deal and turning them right back around and getting a quarterback. Um, it is kind of ideal, but I don't see that happening at this point. So the Vegas Raiders could be dropping back as well. They may pull the trigger before the Falcons at number eight. So the Falcons do have a chance to do so. But it does put them in a dilemma because what if there's, oh my goodness, somebody jumped up and got, let's say, Richardson or Stroud. But like I said, Bryce Young is going to be gone. They got Richardson and Stroud at number, or Richardson or Stroud at number seven. Somebody else might want to get Will Levis real quick. So we may have to, you know, make a move. Well, actually, we will have to make a move, but we'll probably be in a situation to make a move to where we're going to have some draft capital, and probably still get the player that we want, i.e. maybe a Jalen Carter or maybe a, a Nolan Smith. It just depends on, or B. John Robson. It just depends on what the front office actually, you know, want to put on their team or who they want to get at number eight. It, it, you know, we just don't know. I mean, there are they're all the moves that they made, it's all indication that the best player available is going to be the guy. You know, it's all indication that all this stuff is going to be happening, but I don't know how that's going to play out at this point because of the fact that we just don't know. You know what I'm saying? We, we just don't know at the end of the day because the Falcons always keep a lot of information close to them. We don't really know what they're going to do. I mean, it was at one point we kind of knew what Cal, with the Kyle Pitt situation. I got lucky and picked Drake London, but nobody really saw that one. You know, um, and then now you're looking at this situation and – it, it's all over the place, especially especially because all the signings we've done already, we don't know who they're going to pick. So it, it makes it more of a mystery. It makes it more of a, a dilemma of what the Falcons may have to do or what they're going to do when it comes to number eight. What happens if these quarterbacks fall? Because like I said, Adam Schefter already said it's a possibility. Bryce Young is going to go. Houston and Arizona may stay put and don't get a quarterback. The Colts may get a quarterback, but you're still going to have two more out there, maybe three. You're still going to have possibly Anthony Richards, C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Hendon Hooker. And I know Seattle, I don't think Seattle, Detroit, and the Raiders are going to pick a quarterback. We're going to be in a situation where we may have to, uh, we may be able to make some moves and get some pretty good draft capital. Because one thing I will say, if anybody comes in from 13, I'll say 13 on back, we may be able to get some really good draft capital up to the point where we may get another first round pick for next season. I, I'm just saying, I mean, you just never know. You just never know who may pull that trigger and say this is going to be the case. But other than, the, other than that, I'm just going to leave it there. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this, uh, if you like this podcast, 
hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I am on YouTube and Rumble, also on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google Podcasts. Let me know what you guys think, man. Um, the, what are the possibilities here? What is the dilemma that, do you think this is a dilemma? Do you think this is a good problem to have? Is this a head scratcher? Does this put uh, the, the Falcons in a bind? What does this do? Let me know what you guys think, man. Where I stand, I think that if the quarterbacks are available, I think they move down and still be able to get a Nola Smith, B. John Robinson, or they'll be able to get a Jalen Carter. Maybe not so much a Jalen Carter, but it's a possibility. And like I said, the only reason why I say Jalen Carter is because he did visit Flowery Branch this pla the past few days. Also, you know, Anthony Richardson also uh, visited as well. Does that mean that they may try to go up and get him or do they get him or what happens? Or, you know, do they just try to get intel on him so they know who they're trying to move around? If somebody try to move up, oh, they're getting him. We know why they're going up to get him, this, that, and the third. So we kind of know his value because we uh, conversated with him. It's a real interesting situation. I'm going to get out of here. First and FirstandFrameRace.com. First FirstandFrameRace.com. Go check that out. And um, I'm going to have some more goodies over there and for you guys to enjoy um, because I want to make that a robust a robust website. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening. I will see you guys on Wednesday. All right, y'all, y'all take it easy and y'all be blessed. Peace.